Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is currently 11.35 p.m. on this absolutely beautiful Monday night going into Tuesday. And um, it is 73 degrees outside. It's very warm. Feels really, really good. And I love it. I just dropped off my good Judy Tanya Jean for the second time. Because <laughs> the first time we got Fountain Pops, I got a Diet Pepsi, and we drove around and talked. We drove into Noblesville, into the square in Noblesville, and we drove around. And then um, I dropped her off, and I was sitting in the driveway, and I was going through comments on the video before I left. And she came out and she said, I'm going to pick up her dog at the kennel. And she was like, do you want to come with me? Or do you want to take me over there? And I said, sure. And so I took her over and um, we went inside and I used the restroom and then we got her dog and she came home. So now she's home and I'm vlogging. I started a new book today. So I'm going to listen to a little bit of my audiobook afterwards. Um, last night I finished... Uh, if the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy. Five stars. Fantastic. Absolutely loved it. And it's funny because I was thinking when I finished it. Okay. Um, I was thinking to myself, um, this is uh, not a book that I typically would read. Like, it's very much a contemporary romance. But it was really cute. It was really good. It was a book with a purpose. It just was fantastic. And there was a great message to the book. So I gave it five out of five stars. It just was delightful. It was absolutely delightful. I loved the main character, Cindy. I loved some of the other characters in the book too, but I don't want to ruin it for anybody, so I'm not going to say. But then I, start, I, well, then I listened to, well, I started Arsenic and Adobo. And it's a brand new cozy series. It just got started by uh, a new, I think it's her debut book, actually. It's a very interesting book. And um, kind of like the background story to it. I've only listened to about a half an hour of it. God, not even that. Probably 15 minutes of it, 10 to 15 minutes of it. So I don't really want to say much about that until I get into it more. Um, which should probably be tonight. But last night, I listened to like... Oh, I don't know, just like five minutes of it to get it, like, get started into it. And then I, and put it on Goodreads and all that. And then I, um, I was actually going to listen to the White Trash Zombie Apocalypse, which is the third book in the Diana Rowland, My Life is a White Trash Zombie series. But I don't know, I just decided to listen to this one instead. I might actually, because I'm not that far into this yet, I might stop it and go to the White Trash Zombie one. Because that was just kind of like what my gut was telling me to read. We'll see. I don't know. So I, um, or I might read a Dexter book. I want to read a book in a series that I'm kind of like already in already, you know? So I, but when I finished it last night and I started listening to that book, I went in and I started listening, well, I continued listening to the podcast, Your Own Backyard, which is about the Kristen um, Smart disappearance that happened like 20 years ago. It's a really interesting podcast. It's kind of all over the place, honestly. Um, he goes in and he talks about like the night that she disappeared and then the last people that were with her. And then he kind of goes in and starts investigating them. So it's not like, like right out of the gate, there's like not a lot of rhyme or reason to the podcast. Um, and he says that in there. He's like, you know, I just kind of don't really know where I'm going with all of this or whatnot. It's interesting though. Um, it's a good podcast. Interesting podcast. Sad case. Real sad case. So I listened to that. And um, when I got home, my neighbor was taking his dog for a walk. Cause it was <laughs> so late at night or so early in the morning. And um, so I was like, oh, I'm in. I have my podcast turned up real loud. And he like was, had stopped right next to the driveway. And I was like, I'm so into this podcast. And he was like, well, what's it about? And I was telling him, he was like, oh, is she the woman that, um, or the girl that was kidnapped? And I said, no, that's uh, Elizabeth Smart. And I said, actually, the two cases um, get confused sometimes. Like, he talks about that in the podcast, that um, people get those two cases, Elizabeth Smart and Kristen Smart, confused sometimes. Um, you know, Kristen Smart is a case, or Elizabeth Smart is a case that I don't know tons about. 
I know she's written a book too. That might be interesting to read for a true crime book club. We'll talk. I'll talk to Mel about that and see. Anyway, got up today. Um, slept in with the pups and got up and um, ran a bunch of errands and did a bunch of stuff and well, did a bunch of stuff and then around the house. I was doing all kinds of stuff, laundry and just, you know, whatever around the house, making lists, <laughs> phone calls, on and on and on. I actually didn't, oh, then I talked to one of my neighbors, uh, my mom's and my aunt's friend for a long time in the street. Um, so I actually didn't like leave until late. And by the time I left, the, oh, I was trying, no, 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 no. I filmed two videos at home first. I filmed the Peter, my Peterisms video and my drama video, my Peter Mon channel, before I left. And so I was trying to upload those and stuff. And they were taking forever. And so finally I just was, I left. And I went to go get coffee and my Starbucks was closed already. So I, for some reason, I was gonna, I had an idea for a review and it just totally like, I didn't even think about the fact that crumble cookies, I usually do my review on Mondays. I always forget on Mondays about crumble cookies. So I mean, hopefully I can get to that review tomorrow if it's not too busy. Um, so I went to Costco and then I went to Starbucks and I did a review there. And it was almost 7 by the time that I did that review. Alex had to work late tonight, so he got home about 7.30. He got home right before I did. Well, no, he got home probably about an hour before I did because I went to Target then and just picked up some stuff that I needed to have or needed and um, just kind of walked around and looked at stuff. So, yeah, I just kind of like, I got coffee and then I kind of just drove around, listened to my audiobook a little bit, but like I said, not much of it, and drove around and um, did errands and stuff. So we're going to the Zach Bagans Museum while we're in Las Vegas. Well, actually, okay, so there's nine couples going, but like everybody's flying in at different times and different days, and some people are only staying for a day, and some people are staying the whole time. And, um, but anyway, so we're going, there's like a four, I think it's only four of us actually that are going to the Zach Bagans Museum. It's Melissa and Aaron and I, and then one other woman that I don't know real well, friend of Melissa and Jason's. And it's the four of us that are going to the Zach Bagans Museum. So I, did I talk about this last night? I started watching like the ETV or entertainment tonight, I don't know which one was, um, tours that Zach Bagans took this guy through. He did it like two year, a, a year apart. The second one was from not, like it was from, like a year ago. And in there he's talking about like the devil's chair and stuff, which was in the newest Conjuring movie. If you haven't seen it, there's a, the newest, the Conjuring 3 talks about the devil's chair and he goes in and he talks about that case and everything that happened with the case. It's a real spooky movie and I don't know what happened while I was watching it but I started getting real freaked out about doing this Zach Bagans Museum. He started talking about like some people that leave there like you know like evil and negativity get attached to them and all this kind of stuff and <clears throat> I'm real weirdly sensitive to all that stuff anyway as far as like topics to talk about. And, um, you know, like when we did the Fox Hollow Farms, I, I know this is going to sound crazy to some people, but when we went to the Fox Hollow Farms uh, house where her Baumeister killed all those people, all those guys, <clears throat> I wanted some kind of spiritual protection. I just, I just didn't feel comfortable going. And so, I mean, I wanted to do it, but I didn't feel comfortable without some kind of spiritual protection. Because I really do take that stuff seriously. Like, I, I, I believe in it. And so, um, I had my cross and my St. Christopher medal that I got from my mom. I think it was my mom. She bought me a St. Christopher medal, and then it was either her cross. I think it was maybe a cross she bought me. So, I have it on a chain. And then I had gone to 
new age people here in Indianapolis, which sells like all that kind of stuff. It's all about like new agey kind of stuff, right? And I asked the woman there, I explained the situation, and she was like, well, I would recommend black tourmaline. It's like supposed to protect you against that stuff. So I got black tourmaline, which I also have on that necklace, that chain. And then um, she also recommended like sage smudge spray, which I bought and it stinks. I can't stand it. Because my friend Erin, when I was talking to her today, she was like, well, why don't you bring that, that you can sage all of us and you can, and I said, I'm not bringing, I don't want to smell like that, you know, in Las Vegas. <laughs> so I just don't. But I was looking everywhere for that necklace tonight because I was like, I have got to have that necklace and not forget about it. I mean, this is the first thing I have to do or I'm gonna get out there and not wanna go to this thing. But when I started watching the video clips of the Zach Bagans Museum, I started getting real freaked out, you guys. Like, almost kind of like that, like wanting to back out of it and not do it. We've already paid for the tickets and stuff. I mean, I'll go, but like, the tickets were expensive. Apparently they have this thing, the flashlight tour, where you can go for like an hour and a half and they basically just like, there's a guided tour during like certain hours and then they do this like flashlight thing, which we're not doing that because it's like booked straight through or they're not doing it now or something. Melissa told me why we're not doing it. I can tell you right now, if we had tickets to go to do the flashlight thing and, um, that was what our tickets were for, I probably would back out because after I saw what the, what I had envisioned in my head of what it looked like and what the museum looks like are two completely different things. I imagined it to look like a museum. It looks like a house. And I know it's kind of like, um, you know, just in this like kind of like, I don't know, building or whatever. There's like two buildings, he says in one thing that they own and that they're expanding. But like, after I saw it, it looks like an old house inside, which is probably how he wants it to be. But there's like coffins and haunted, like artwork from people. And um, I don't know, there's just a lot of stuff that like, I'm not really sure how I feel. You know what I mean? About it. So, I mean, I can always just not go at the last minute. I think I'll probably go. Um, and see it. It was interesting because he was talking about, he's like, you have to be really confident when you come into these things so that, you know, like you can't be scared and fearful and whatever. And I'm like, how do you do that? But like, it's funny because like, as interested in it as Melissa is, like in all the paranormal stuff, and she and Aaron have done like a lot of these like ghost hunt kind of things. They've been to like Waverly. They've been to like a lot of these closed down psychiatric hospitals that they do tours through and stuff. Like Melissa is never scared. Like she is fearless when it comes to this stuff. And Aaron kind of is too. And I kind of wonder, like, like Melissa, I think she wants to believe in it, but like, we should actually talk about it. Like, and we'll do a little video together or something. But like, I think Melissa wants to believe in it, but she's like, I want to see proof. Like, I want to see something move in front of me kind of thing, you know? And hasn't really seen it yet. So I think she's very, you know, skeptical about it. Um, whereas like, I believe in this stuff. Like, I firmly believe <clears throat> in evil spirits and all negativity and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I really do. And I just think that you have to protect yourself against that, you know, with goodness and prayer and all that. But like most of these people that I've met, like these ghost hunter types, they're just like super uber confident. Like, but it's weird. Like they believe in it, but they kind of, at the same time, you can tell that they kind of like need, like they want proof. It's like they're looking for a burning bush or something like that. Like to be convinced that they should believe in all of it, you know? I don't know. I've wanted to do the Zach Bagans Museum for a long time, so, um, but apparently it's supposed to be like the scariest thing ever there. I mean, worst case scenario, I'll just go walk outside. You know what I mean? Bye. You know, if I like get super freaked out or whatever, I'll just say I'm leaving. I can't stay in here anymore. The devil's chair thing, they have like locked up in this like room with like a door. Hold on, let me turn the air on. They have it like locked up in this room 
with this door and like you can't get to it. I think they open it on the tour or something like that. And he was like, you can sit in it. He went to this guy. He was like, Do you want I was like, after everything you just said about like how this is like one of the most highly pe spiritual pieces that you have, like you want somebody to sit into it. And apparently people that have used the chair before like had a lot of back pain and this one guy had to have like a back surgery and stuff after like using, sitting in the chair and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, I would not be sitting in that chair. I won't be sitting in that chair or touching it or whatever. I don't know. So, if you've been, put in the comment section below what you think are the most interesting things there that I should look at. videos up today when I got home I was like real tired I'm still really tired my eyes have been really tired um, I got home and Alex had fed Boo and Tucker and they were running around being hilarious being little cuties and then I was still working on getting stuff up and Alex went and got into bed um, pretty early tonight because I went upstairs and talked to him for a little bit. And that was at like 9 o'clock, 9, 9.30. He was like in bed playing his game. He had a long day today. He was tired. So, yeah, that was that. When I was at Costco today, I showed this on my vlog. Uh, or not my vlog, but I showed it on my Peter Does Stuff channel. They have the most beautiful, like... They have beautiful mums there right now. I hope they still have them um, when we get back from Las Vegas because I don't want to buy plants until I get back from Las Vegas. But they had the both most beautiful mums that were just starting to sprout. But they also have these like flower, not flower arrangements, but planter arrangements. They do it at winter time and they do it in the summer too and they're gorgeous. And they are, like, they had, like, cabbages or something in them. And then they had, uh, like, mums inside of them. I'd like to, what I would like to do is get two of those and two mums. That's what I would like to do. And have those for my front porch. And I guess just say goodbye to the rest for summer. I think they'll be real pretty out there. Costco had really nice pumpkins too. And they were cheap. I can't remember what they were. They were like $9.99 or $5.99 or whatever. And they were big pumpkins. But the thing is, is it's like so early to get a pumpkin, you know? Like in Indiana, if you get a pumpkin this early, and it, it, even if you don't carve it, like if you carve it, it's 100 times worse, right? But if you don't carve it and you leave it outside, like between now and the, you know, for Halloween, the 31st of October, <laughs> I know you guys know when Halloween is. Between now and then, like, we're going to have a lot of warm days. And, like, the pumpkins just turn mushy. Like, they don't stay, right? So, it's like, well, I feel like I shouldn't get a pumpkin or gourds or any of that kind of stuff until at least, I don't know, till at least, like, the 1st of October to make sure that it's going to last. And even then, that's kind of early, you know, to... I don't know. I don't know. Who knows these things? Not me. <laughs> it was funny. I was reading this comment at Tanya's house. I was just telling Tanya this. This was in between, like, me dropping her off the first time and then going to um, the kennel to pick up her dog and come back. And I read this comment. And I don't know who it was from, but they, this was on my drama channel. And they said, my favorite story of yours is still when you were, I was, oh, I was, oh, maybe it was my Costco video today. Cause, oh, it was my Costco video because I was showing like the bundles of books. And she said, you showing these bundles of books still reminds me of my favorite story of yours, which was when you were on your dad's boat on the 4th of July and the drunk lady was with the, have my books. And I was crying saying, those are my books. <laughs> 
Oh my god, that story is like so tragic and weirdly sad from like that I lived through that when I was a kid. I still remember it like it was yesterday. It was so funny. So, I mean, it's not funny. It's sad, right? But so, you know, my dad had this boat in Saugatuck, Michigan, and a um, sailboat. And his partner had a sailboat as well, though then later they ended up getting rid of the sailboat and they had like a crisscross, like 50 foot, um, like triple decker kind of, you know, boat. So on the weekends, what everybody would do was there was this long canal that went like from the marina and like the harbor of Saugatuck. Well, you went from the marina past the harbor in Saugatuck, I think, if I remember correctly. And then you go down this long winding canal. It takes like an hour. And then you get to the, maybe a half an hour. I don't remember how long. But anyway, there's houses on either side and stuff. And then you get to this cove. And right be, like right after the cove is this like direct thing like with you know, concrete and steel walls on either side that after the cove goes right out to Lake Michigan. And once you get out there, like it's the beaches on either side and then you're like out in the uh, in uh, the lake and with the ocean, but you're like right out in like the big waves of Lake Michigan, you know? I mean, I'm thinking about that now. It's so funny to me that I didn't get more scared when I was a kid. I just didn't. And I'd jump in the water and swim and whatever, you know, out there. And yes, I thought about sharks, but I don't know, I just, um, my dad one time even with my cousin Caroline and I, he like was filming this. I'm like, he had like this big Betamax camera thing. And he, I remember like he got it and he was real excited about it. And so we were like out by this buoy. He had like anchored out by this like big buoy that they would have like out in the lake, right? And like the scene at the beginning of Jaws, he was like, oh, we should do that scene in Jaws. And Caroline and I were out there and he was like, okay, act like you're getting tugged under by a shark. And we're like, ah, ah. <laughs> My dad. Anyway, um, I wonder where those videos are today. So anyway, um, I talked to Caroline today for a while. We had a good talk. So anyway, um, this cove right before you take off to go to the lake, right? A lot of people never went out on the lake. They just went to the cove. And the cove was like where, it was this big cove where everybody would hang out. And the water was like crystal clear all the way through. It was like, you know, like lake water, but it was crystal clear that you could see all the way through and fish and minnows and stuff. And then it was real shallow. And um, so there was a, a beach that had like this dune on it. And it wasn't huge, but like everybody would like, the kids would like, take little whalers and stuff or just take, you know, their life jackets and swim into shore and then all the kids would play on the beach and the parents would party on the boat. They'd like, you know, put like four boats together and, you know, rope them together or use the bungee cords and like bungee cord boats together, like four in a row. Like if you've ever been to like a cocktail cove kind of thing, that's how, like my dad where he lives, that guy, they have like a cocktail cove out there and um, like people do that all the time. Like they just like bungee cord their boats together for an entire day and then they party. Well, that's what people did in the cove like years and it's not a new thing <laughs> years and you're in the 80s you know well 1980 because I was like eight when my dad was doing that so this one fourth of July we like ran into town I don't remember what we were doing we like ran into town to get a bunch of stuff and so everybody left ahead of us I think we were going to the grocery store or something like that and we like were the last to leave the marina and um you know, a lot of people that would come to Saugatuck were, like, very wealthy people that came down from Chicago. And they would have, like, a lot of people had, like, big cigarette boats. Do you guys know what those are? They're, like, the long, they're, like, the race boats. And, you know, or they drive them down from Chicago, you know, boat down from Chicago. And a lot of people down there had houseboats that they would come on. And they would stay there for the whole summer. Not just a weekend, but for the whole summer. These older couples, right? And so, you know, like, that was, like, their lake house. Well, these, these were, like, really really nice houseboats that had like, you know, planters and whatever. Well, there was like, you know, planters on the front with like, you know, plants and TVs inside. And they were nice. They were like houses on boats, houseboats, you know? And they had the, the top, the deck on top where you could stand and like wave to people and stuff. And then, you know, you would drive underneath. You guys, you know what I'm talking about? Okay. So, and they're like flat, right? Like they're like pontoon boats with, that had houses on them. Okay. So, 
this at this point, my dad's partner, he like his business partner, he and his wife had bought the um, the crisscross. I think that's what it was called, Chris Craft whatever kind of boat, I don't know. But anyway, and it was on the other side, because the sailboats, they kept on one side of the marina, and then like, it was like all of these, this huge long dock that we like, our boat was on, and then you like would walk down, and there was this um, ship that had sunk, I can't remember what it was called, the Kiowa or something like that, that they had at the marina. Like they had brought it in, it had sunk, and they had brought it in, or maybe it sunk like in the marina or something, I don't remember, but anyway. We used to run through there as kids because you could go in one side and come out the other and we would like play in there and stuff like that. It was huge. It was like not as big as the Titanic, but it was huge. You can look it up online. I've talked about that on here before. So they had that. And so like you would come down from the sailboat area and then like if you went further back was where like the showers and there was like a restaurant there and bathrooms and there was like a little store for like boating stuff and like a general store you could get candy and chips and drinks and stuff like that. And then if you went around to the other side of the marina was where like all of like the cruise ships, not the cruise ships, but where the speed boats and stuff like that were, right? Because they kept them separate from the sailboats. So my dad's partner was down there. So we would go down there to see him and hang out on their boat, you know, and then they'd have drinks and um, all this kind of stuff. And um, I remember my dad, he tells this story still. So my dad, or my dad's partner at the time, um, his kids were young and they also had a little dog, little schnauzer that they would bring that had like a little dog life jacket on. And so my dad this one time, his partner's son sat on his sunglasses or stepped on his sunglasses or whatever and they were like those Porsche Carrera sunglasses and they were like a really nice pair that my, my dad used to, I used to wear those a lot too, I love them. Um, but like they were like a really nice pair that my dad had just gotten and all it was was that he had like bent the arm a little bit and my dad goes, well those are practically trash now you might as well just throw them overboard and the kid picked them up and threw them overboard. <laughs> my dad still tells that story to this day. So anyway, um, so he, uh, so we were like, we knew some of the people that were around their boat. Well, there was this couple that was like two down from like where my dad's partner and his wife had and their kids and dog had their boat. And it was this houseboat, a real nice houseboat, you know, like big houseboat. And they would stay in for the whole summer. And I remember this couple and it was like this guy and he was like, you would see this type of guy in a lot of movies back then. You know, he was like, heavier guy and you know bald but would wear a toupee and have like big like Hawaiian floral shirts on and you know just thought that he was cats me out kind of you know whatever and then his wife she had like this real shorty little hairdo on and she always had those like one piece bathing suits with big floral print that had a skirt and stuff you know and they were always drunk and they were always screaming and shouting at each other okay I mean like we knew that about them, that they were always drunk and they were always screaming and shouting at each other. I was digging in my purse. Did I ever find my, my purse? I was digging in my bag. Did I ever find my lip balm? I don't think I did. Let me get in here. I need some lip balm. Did I ever use it? I don't know. So that 4th of July, we got back to the marina from wherever we were, a grocery store or whatever. There was this like grocery store kind of like in between the town of Saugatuck and the marina. I remember going to it. It was just like some big grocery store. I do remember that in Michigan, this was something like in Indiana we didn't do it, but in Michigan we did that. In Michigan you did that like you could recycle cans and like you could turn them in and cans said like three cents or five cents. Some of them said 10 cents, I think. I don't know. They were either all the same I feel like some of them were like, you got more money for them, but they would say underneath there, they would say like 10 cents and then they would list the states. Like they would say like M I V A, like, you know, like the state initials, like where you could like turn them in and then you could turn them into the gas station and you can make money. And my dad used to say to me, that over the course of a weekend, because there was this girl that I was friends with at the marina from Chicago. This is so weird. I don't know how, but I remember that her name was, was Tanya. Tanya or Tanya, but I do remember that. And she and I would collect cans because then my dad said at the end of the weekend, I could turn all the cans in for whatever money they were worth. And I can remember making quite a bit of money off those cans. So anyway, um, does anybody else remember that from the States where you could turn in cans for like recyclable money? Anyway, okay, so, 
And I just remember going to that uh, that gas station. My dad drank Squirt always, and so I remember we would go there and get Squirt, and I would get like Mr. Pibb or whatever or something. I love, I've always loved Mr. Pibb and Dr. Pepper and root beer. So anyway, it stopped. Anyway, so we were coming back to the marina and we were late compared to everybody else that they had already left, you know? If you've ever seen this scene in Jaws 2 at the beginning, well, kind of at the beginning, but like when they all the boats go out for the day, that's what it was like. Like everybody would leave and go down the canal at the same time. So you'd be like, hey, how are you? Oh, it's good to see you, how are you? And it was like that, right? And then like, you know, like if somebody like, my partner, you know, like if he left ahead and like his wife was having lunch or something, she'd say, can you just take me out to the co to the cove? And then she'd ride with us or whatever. So it was like people always riding with whatever. So we get there or to the, to the marina and there must've been like a bench or something like before you go down to where the boats are because that woman was there, the wife of this couple. And she was like super, super upset. She was bawling her eyes out and all this kind of stuff. Okay, before I get into the story, I have to tell you. Whenever my dad and I would go out of town for the weekend, like he, my dad loved to read, so he would always get some big thick book, you know, that was about like, I don't know, something going on in the world that like he wanted to know more about. And so we would go to like B. Dalton's or Walden Books or something like that. And my dad said, you know, you can get whatever you want to get just for the weekend. So I would always buy, and I still have a couple of them in the basement. I would always buy like, this is, I showed this today when we were at, when I was at Costco, because at Costco, they had the, the Narnia Chronicles, which I think I have, and then they also showed, like I think I have it that way, and then they, or they showed, they also, they have that. They also have all of the um, Laura Ingalls Wilder Little House on the Prairie books, like in a set, you know, it comes in like a little cardboard little deal, and that was what I would buy, and I would buy like, the, um, I can't think of his name. I was saying it today and I couldn't think of his name either. The guy that wrote Charlie and the Chocolate Factory or it was, and, uh, Charlie and the Glass Elevator. And then it was The Witches and it was James and the Giant Peach. Those were the four books. And the one they made into a movie a couple years ago, the whatever, it started with like a B, I can't remember. It's like initials. But anyway, those were the books that came together in like a little set, right? I remember I got that one time that we went to Chicago. And then another time, when we were going this 4th of July weekend, I got a set of, um, why can't I think of her name? Uh, Beverly Cleary books. And on there, I, I swear to God, I thought I just saw somebody sitting behind me, like sitting right behind me. That scared the hell out of me. I had, I got the set of these, Beverly Cleary, that's who it is, right? And it was, you know, um, Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret, and all those books, Tales of a Fourth Grade, Nothing. It was all these Beverly Cleary books. I think that's, isn't that who wrote, Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret? Okay. So, we go on this trip. I have got those books down below. They're, like, I haven't taken them out of the package yet, okay? They're still, like, in the plastic package. And when we would go down, and when you went into our boat, like, it was real tight confines, kind of, like, it was like a couch. When you walk down this, these wooden steps, it was like, you know what's so weird? It's like, I can see my dad, like, I was down there, like, during, like, horrible storms when we would be out on the lake, and I can see him running down and running back up, running down and running back up, trying to take the sail down, and he would be like, just stay down here, just stay down here, and I can see this, like, him, like, kind of, like, my dad never really panicked, but, like, I could tell, like, he was trying, because he would say that we just need to take the sail down and then just stay under while the storm passed. Be like a really horrific storm, you know, and then I would just stay down there and I can see my dad in boat shoes just running up and down these little steps. But anyway, when you walk down, there was like a sink and a stove and stuff right next to you on your right, and then to your left, there was like these bunk heads underneath, and then there was like a couch and a couch, and then you could put a thing over that, like in the middle, and you could make a bed out of it. And that was usually where I slept. Sometimes I slept in the back with my dad. And there was like a V berth in the back. And then there was a bathroom that you could like turn into a shower and whatever. We never did that. We just used the toilet that you had to like empty on your own, you know, that kind of toilet. And then there was a V berth in the back that also had like this little thing you pushed up and, um, and it, like you could like look, put your head out and look outside and stuff like that. So anyway, we're going on, we're getting ready to go out on the boat on 4th of July and 
my dad sees her crying and he stops and he's like, are you okay? And she's like, my husband left without me and we got into a fight. And now I'm not going to be able to be in the cove. And I'm going to miss everybody and I'm going to miss him. And I don't know why he left me. And she was very upset and she was drunk, wasted or something. So, I mean, she was drunk, wasted, but she said something like that. I don't remember. So we end up getting her on our boat, okay, and to take her out to the cove. I think with the idea... I don't really remember the story. I would have to talk to my dad about it again. But, like, I think with the idea that she was going to get on her husband's boat, right? So, we go out to the cove, and it's people partying and whatever. And I don't know why, but, like, that day, we didn't, like, link up with anybody else or something. I think my dad was just, like, so over it that she was on her boat. She was, like, crying the entire time, right? Drunk and crying and drinking and stuff. And, um, I, two things I remember is, this is the, the memory that somebody put on my video and said that they still remember the story, is that at one point I like walked downstairs. I think my dad was like, go check on her or something. She was like downstairs. She wouldn't come out. And so I went down there to check on her. Well, okay. So this is what happened when we get to the cove. So her husband comes by at some point and right as she like steps out, uh, from downstairs and he goes by and he sees her and he's got all these like big breasted topless gals on his boat. <laughs> I mean, it was like, you couldn't make this stuff up. Like this is, this really happened. And, and he was like, Hey, and she was like, Oh, and she ran downstairs. Right. Okay. So now she's down there and she will not come out. And so like basically our 4th of July is ruined. <laughs> but what this person said in the comment, what was I mean, it's sad, but it's kind of funny. And she wouldn't come out, and at one point, I walked downstairs, and she had opened my books, and she was reading my books. And she was reading, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. And she was bawling, and she, like, looked at me, and she said, this book, she said something like, this book is so sad. And I said, those are my books. Like, I was so upset. I was so upset that she was reading my book. I was like, how dare she open my books? Like, she has ruined our day and everything. But anyway. <laughs> Isn't that so funny? It's funny how, like, my memories of going to the lake in the summer have changed over time. It's like, recently, like, when I think about it, I think about, like, how... Like, I feel like my dad, like, we would go up there on, like, my dad would take off the rest of the week and we would go up there on, like, a Wednesday. And I can remember when it would be, like, real bad weather and it would be raining and stuff. My dad would just be like, we're out of here. Let's go to Chicago. And we would go to Chicago for the weekend and we would visit my dad's friend that lives in, like, she lived in Hinsdale. It was my parents' friend, she and her husband. And they lived in Hinsdale. And then they moved to uh, Oak Brook or Oak Park. I don't know which one. But anyway... And we would go visit her, and I remember, because she had this house with an inside pool. It was gorgeous. And um, it had, like, all these, like, windows, so, like, these French doors and windows that went to this pool. That was amazing. So, anyway, and I always wanted to swim, and I always brought my bathing suit. We always did that on the way out of town. But my dad would be like, let's just go to Chicago for the weekend, you and me, and we'll go out to dinner, and we'll go see a show and stuff. And I always was, like, hoping, and, like, when we would get to Saga Tech, I was praying for rain so that we could, like, go to Chicago for the weekend. <laughs> So anyway, those were good weekends. My dad and I always had fun on those trips. We would eat raw hot dogs a lot. I don't know why I remember that. And my dad loved... My dad, okay, so my dad has like really good taste in food today. But he still kind of likes stuff that, to me, is kind of a little weird, honestly. Like, I don't like it. Well, I'm a vegetarian now, so I wouldn't eat it. But I've always kind of, like, I don't know uh, what I think about that. Like, so, my dad always liked to eat, like, meat, like, raw meat. Like, ham like not hamburger, but, like, hot dogs, raw, whatever. Okay, he loves or loved back in the day. I think he still does. Those Kipper Snack sardines that you actually do roll the can back. It always reminds me of this little Audrey cartoon. Did you guys ever see that little Audrey cartoon where she goes to the bottom of the sea? I don't know why, but those sardines always remind me of that cartoon. And I think there was like a can of sardines in it that sang or something like that. I used to love that cartoon with little Audrey. I think that's part of why like I never ate fish was that cartoon. <laughs> I don't know why, but... um. 
that and because when we were in Hawaii, I saw those fish that day that my dad wanted me to eat mahi-mahi. And I can remember when it came on the plate, I thought it looked just like I had seen those fish swimming in the ocean. But anyway, because um, I've never really been able to eat a lot of seafood. So, what was I saying? I literally just lost my mind. So, okay. Um, raw hot dogs, sardines. Okay, one thing that my dad, he loved, uh, Alex loves it too, and I don't understand it, is ham salad. I just, I can't, that pink ham salad, I cannot do it. Alex likes a different kind of ham salad. I mean, he would eat that, but Alex likes, which is real weird to me because Alex doesn't love pork. But what's weird to me is, Alex likes this ham salad that comes in these little cans that looks like uh, cat food. I mean, in fact, whenever he, his mom gets it just for him, and I'm always like, mew, mew, because it looks like cat food. And that's what he puts inside of his arepas. He, lo he loves the ham salad inside of there. Oh, yeah, yeah. So my dad loves, like, ham salad that you get in, like, the deli at the grocery store, like the pink ham salad, and he loves to eat those long pretzel sticks and just dip it in there or on a sandwich bread he loves that too and then my dad also loves brown schwager do you guys know what that is i don't even know if i can explain how it is it's like a meat that you get in the deli section too my grandma loved it i think it's kind of like a german thing my grandma had like you know german ancestry and so i think it was i don't know but they have a pumpkin out there. They don't know just lights. But my dad loves that brown schwager stuff. And um, and I remember one time I said something to him. He was like, you don't want any? I said, no. And I was like, he's like, are you sure? This is like, I mean, this is literally like probably just two or three years before I was a vegetarian recently. And I was like, no, dad, you know I don't like that brown schwager stuff. Because I've never understood why you didn't like this brown schwager stuff. It's just a cheaper form of pate. And I'm like, well, I didn't like, I've never liked pate either. I don't like all that kind of like weird stuff that people call delicacies. I don't like caviar. I think I've only ever tried caviar once. And I was like, ugh. And I don't like caviar. And I don't like brown schwager. I don't like pate. Um, I can't do any, I couldn't do any of that stuff even before I was a vegetarian. Like, it had to be like, and honest, also, this is, okay, with steaks and cheeseburgers and stuff, always had to be like very well done. Like, I didn't, I did, I, towards the end, I would do like medium well sometimes, but like, I typically always got stuff well done. Like, it had to be like almost kind of like a steak had to have like, <laughs> some black on it for me to even like you know kind of like almost a little charred for me to even really like it my stepmom laughs about that stuff too because she's like I can't believe your dad likes all that stuff she likes ham salad though I think Ugh. what's something else that my dad loves he loves pretzels I always have pretzels he loves the big you know uh, thick pretzels that are like that and he loves little pretzels and he at his house, like, he'll take a block of cheese out, and he'll, like, if you're standing there and just talking in the kitchen, he'll, like, cut up a bunch of, like, he'll cut a slice of cheese off a block and then cut it in, like, thirds, and then, like, put pretzels out, and that's kind of, like, his little snack. He just does that right there on the island. He loves cheese. My dad loves olives. He loves stuffed olives. Um, he loves these marinated asparagus, uh, like, I don't... A friend of his used to make them. I don't know where he where he got those. They're good, though. I like those. He likes spicy mustard. We used to love this mustard, my dad and I. Oh, my God. I actually looked for it and looked for it and looked for it forever, and I couldn't find it. Like, now, I think, like, the only reason I would, I would put it on a cheese sandwich, which I would still do, I mean, you know. But, um... We looked for it forever, and it's called Durkee's Mustard, and it has, like, a light blue cap on it. It's not Dijon. It's Durkee's. I know Dijon Mustard. And it's kind of, like, a sweet, spicy to it. My dad and I loved it. If you, It's, like, if you're going to make, like, a turkey or ham sandwich, like, it's delicious on that. It's almost kind of, like, a little creamy mayonnaise -y. I don't even know how to explain it. There's only, like, a few grocery stores that carry it. And, uh, but I did look on Amazon or somewhere and I, they had it and I was like, oh, and it was real expensive. It was like one bottle was like $19.99. I was like, this is ridiculous for a bottle of it. I almost bought it just because I missed it so much. That's so funny. When I was like in high school, 
and I would stay at my dad's house. This is the kind of stuff they always have. Oh, God, I just bit the side of my mouth. The kind of stuff they would always have in the refrigerator. First of all, my dad always had, my dad and my stepmom, they always kind of had the same foods forever. They always had like tons of like lunch meat, like really good turkey, really good cheese, whole grain bread, jerky sauce, lettuce, and I would always just make sandwiches. Like every day I had sandwiches at my dad's house. And then um, they always had kettle barbecue chips. I'm sure they still do. And then he has a huge glass canister in the kitchen of the straight pretzels and of the little small pretzels. And tons of cheese at their house. Always blocks and blocks of cheese. Fresh orange juice with pulp. I think my dad and I might be two of the only people that love orange juice with pulp. I like all the pulp you can have in orange juice. I love it. And then always skim milk. Tons of it. Um... And then in the freezer, they'd always have ice cream. My dad um, loved, loves, loves those Jimmy Dean, those little small ones. You guys know what I'm talking about? Sausage biscuits, but not like sausage, cheese, and egg, just sausage biscuits. And sometimes, especially for breakfast, my dad, like, my dad is actually a really good cook. Um, good griller, good cook, everything. Can make a whole casserole. A couple years ago, um, it was when Alex's family had gone to Venezuela um, for Christmas, and we were back here. It was like us and Alex's aunt and uncle, um, and well, it was like his mom. It was before Carlos and Liliana were here, and Alex's mom, stepdad, and brother Fufu, they went, and so, um, and his aunt, uncle, and grandma were here. So before we went over, I think that's who, I don't remember, anyway. My dad made an entire, like he looked it up and everything, and he made an entire Venezuelan meal for Alex and I for Christmas, including like a bottle of Venezuelan Malbec that he had looked up, and like all this stuff, like everything that you would have at a Venezuelan Christmas, my dad made, handmade, almost all of it was handmade. And that's so cool that my dad did that. So, um, a bit, because he wanted Alex to feel like he was having like a Venezuelan Christmas too. It was really a nice gesture. It was really cool. Um, so my dad on some breakfasts, like when I was growing up, like if I would, like if I was in high school, um, and like my a couple, like two of my girlfriends would stay over and we'd watch scary movies in the basement or something like that. My parents never really had an issue with that. I think you know. Well, my dad said he knew I was gay from a young age. So if I was like, can I have two of my girlfriends stay up? We're going to sleep in the basement. They could care less about that. So we would stay in the basement. When we get up the next day, my dad would be like, do you guys want breakfast? And he would make homemade sausage biscuits uh, from scratch. And what he would do is he would make the biscuits, you know, that come in like a little tube. And then um, homemade sausage, not homemade sausage, but he would like, you know, uh, grill the sausage on the stove. And then he would put like, uh, grape jelly on them as well and they were so good I love that meals at my dad and my stepmom's house when I was growing up were a lot different than meals at my mom's house my mom did the staples she did like uh, meatloaf and taco Tuesday although for a long time my stepmom made the most uh, amazing, she's a good cook too, most amazing chicken tacos you've ever had in your entire life. But like, I ate them so much. This happened with her chicken salad too. Because one summer I like ate her chicken salad every, she put grapes and pecans and it was her chicken salad. It's like, oh my God, chef's kiss. It's like the best. But I ate so much of it that I kind of like couldn't eat it anymore, like with her chicken tacos. I remember one time she like, she was so excited. I came over there and she was like, oh, I made chicken tacos. I was like, mm. Like, I was like, I can't eat another chicken taco to save my life. So, anyway, you know, my mom did the mainstays. I've talked about them on here before. Chicken curry and chicken a la king were her two things that she made that were my favorites. Um, my dad and my stepmom, like, my dad grilled out a lot. I remember we had steaks a lot when I would be at their house with, like, wild, um, wild rice, like, wild grain rice or, like, um, the Stouffer's spinach souffle my dad would make a lot. I used to talk, I've talked on here on my vlog a lot about like what my dad would have when he was single before like he and my stepmom got married. But I haven't talked a lot about, because we used to do that a lot too when my dad was single. I haven't talked a lot about like what we would have as dinners when it was the three of us. Because when I would come over there like 
on the weekends and during school nights, like we had sit down dinners. Both of my parents really, really believed in the sit down dinners and you talk about your day and all that kind of stuff. My stepmom was so great. She would make so many casseroles and always had like biscuits and a salad and she did great. Like, you know, as far as like family dinners, we all, you know, we'd sometimes get pizza or whatever, but like we had a lot of like sit down family dinners. If it was warm, we would sit outside and if not, we'd sit in the dining room or we'd sit in the kitchen or, you know, whatever, and watch a show together or a movie. And they really tried. Like, they, I mean, they tried really, really hard, especially when I was like, I would say middle school. But, you know, I didn't have any friends in late, like, or middle school to early high school. So when I was like at my dad and my stepmoms for the weekend, I was like there, you know, like, and we would hang out. And they really entertained me a lot, you know, like, my dad would always go to bed early, but my stepmom and I would stay up and we would watch movies and we would go to the grocery store and like the Friday that I got there, my dad and I, and he'd be like, you can get whatever you want. And I remember we used to get this creamy rotini pasta salad from a Marsh grocery store and, you know, we would get all kinds of other stuff and, um, you know, and I'd just do what I wanted to do, but like... I also remember that neither of my parents, like my mom, my dad, and my stepmom, none of them were ever like weird about me sleeping in. Like, I remember I slept, I mean, I don't sleep in as late as I do now, but, like, I would sleep in, and, like, I don't remember any of them really having a huge issue with it, you know, and being like, you gotta get up, we've got things to do. Like, I never, was never like that. When I was there for the weekend, it wasn't like, I mean, in the summer, I had, like, chores, obviously. Like, I had to, like, water all the plants around the pool and stuff and out front, and I had to, you know, help clean the pool, because I was really the only one using the pool and make sure the patios were clean, stuff like that. Um, you know, when I house sat for them, it was always like, you know, feed the dogs, keep the house clean, things like that, but. We had good times. My dad grilled out a lot, I do remember that. Like, he loves to grill out. And then my stepmom would always do like a salad. She made incredible salads do a salad and like a vegetable side or something and then we would have like some kind of dessert or whatever and you know they would go to bed so early that I, I do think that that kind of lent to me drinking a lot at their house so because my dad always had the house that had like you know he would have a lot of parties in the summer and stuff so like in the basement there would be like you know, like, those big things, like, those metal tins that you put ice in, and then you just, like, put a bunch of soda and beer and stuff? Like, we always have, like, four or five of those in, like, the side room. The basement is huge, my dad's house. There's two rooms on either side of the basement that are, like, unfinished. And we would always have, like, those metal things. Like, he would just carry those in after the party, after he emptied out the ice and water, and just carry them in. So there would be, like, beer that had been there for, like, a year. Well, I would go down there and steal it. You know, my dad always, I don't think this is the case today, but he always had, like, you know, a full bar at his house. And, and later he said that he knew. Like, well, when I was in high school, he said he knew that I was stealing alcohol. But I would, like, you know, go down there and um, steal alcohol. I also, uh, I had a water bed. And I joked with my friends. I called it the four corners of the earth. And in each corner of my water bed, I had, like, a seltzer bottle that was full of like hard liquor and I kept them filled at any time. Like if I had to have my friends get alcohol for me to keep them filled or whatever. And so, you know, my dad and my stepmom would go to bed at like eight or nine o'clock and they were in their rooms. Like my stepmom might've stayed up and watched a movie for a little bit, but like my dad was like out eight or nine. No, probably never nine, like eight o'clock. And so I'm like, why is it? Oh, the battery is about to die. And you know what? And I have a battery, but I don't know how charged it is. But you guys think it's so weird that, like, everything is showing up kind of reddish orange in this video tonight? I don't know why that is. Usually it's, it's like if I wear a blue shirt, but I don't have a blue shirt on. Let me pull in here to the gas station, and I will change the battery so I can finish this. But I also don't know how this... I, the other, the third battery was in my bag, and I hadn't charged it. So I have a half-charged battery, excuse me, with me. So, we pull in here. 
please tell me I brought the battery with me. Found a pen. Oh, I don't wanna to have to end this early. Oh, here it is, okay. I do have it right here, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I think it might be time to invest in it. My camera is getting so hot. Again, you guys, and it's not like hot here, so I know it's just from filming. I think it might be time for me to invest in a new camera and like two or three new batteries and just throw the old ones out. Um, what was I saying? So yeah, so like, I would still alcohol from my dad too. So when my dad and my stepmom went to bed, you know, thinking nothing of it, I don't think they, they really knew for the majority of the time, you know, I would go upstairs. Now, this was sometimes when I was younger, like 12 to 14, but the majority of this, I would say was like 14 to 16. When I could, when I could drive, I was gone. Like I was like, you know, not at home. I was out with my friends or they came over and we would like, you know, whatever. But I would drink in my room and I can remember that like, so if this was my bed, straight down, my, my bedroom was weird. It was like, I had this big room, but then there was like closet, closet, and then this like long area that went out that looked over the pool and the lake. And then I had a, and that had a window and then I had, I had a desk at the end of it. And then I had a window to my right as well, like a pop on chair in the corner. And it was very pure one out, you know? If you ever been to Pier 1, you know, is it like out of focus? I'm so tired of this camera going out of focus. But anyway, um, so I can remember that, like I had this like, it was like this wooden baseboard, uh, wooden uh, base for this water bed. And I would sit on the end on the carpet with my back up against the bed. And then like three feet in front of me or two feet in front of me was like this TV that I had with like a VCR in front of it. And I would just watch movies and sit there and drink. And I can remember like either if I had my own alcohol drinking it or sneaking down the stairs and stealing alcohol from them. But I don't, I remember several occasions with my dad confronting me about the alcohol, but I don't remember like tons you know, and I would be very much like, it's just a, it was just this one, I just wanted to try it. Like, I'm sorry, and he'd be like, okay. Um, you know, and then as I got older and I started getting into trouble, I think like, you know, they they knew, you know, it was like, they, it was obvious that my alcohol intake was a problem, I think. Then they became a lot more guarded with their alcohol and stuff like that. And I do know that at one point, my dad went through like all his liquor bottles. This is how he knew that I was taking alcohol. Cause he, and I didn't know this. <laughs> he had taken like a pen and he had drawn lines. So like he knew like on the majority of the things, like how much alcohol was in it. So, like, if, you know, after they had had people over or whatever, he would, like, draw a line on, like, five of the bottles, and then he would just look and see, you know, and then there was an incident when somebody had gifted my dad, or he had brought it back, or something, I don't know, a bottle of Uzo, which Uzo is, like, a licorice drink that you drink in Italy, and you're supposed to drink it on, like, ice with, like, a coffee bean in it, I think, and, um, so... I had like drank a bunch of it and I was like, I'm just gonna fill it back up with water when I'm done. I know my dad's not gonna drink this. This isn't something. It was like a brand new bottle that had like been opened like once and that was it. And I was like, he's never gonna drink this. This isn't what he, you know, would drink. So I know that nobody that is ever gonna come over here is gonna drink. It was in the way back of the liquor cabinet. And I was like, Nobody's gonna ever know, blah, 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 whatever. And so I can remember I just got tanked on this Uzo. And then like, I filled it back up with water and I like freaked out immediately. So what happens to Uzo, is, well, I don't know if it was immediately, but when it started happening, I freaked out. What happens to Uzo is that when you mix it with ice and water, ice or water, it like mix, a, it turns a cloudy color. I think it's supposed to be that way. So the entire bottle turned this cloudy color. So you could tell that like water had been. Yeah. And I think at some point I had been doing that too with the other liquor. I was like watering down the liquor or something like that. I don't know.
it's so bizarre now when I think back on that, you know, and, and I really feel like I missed out on a lot of, like, those really good years that I could have just been, like, reading a book and going to bed. You know, there was so much of my life that was just that. There was so much of my life that was just, you know, I didn't drink every night that I was, like, in middle school and high school. I very rarely did I. I mean, like, in high school, I would say my partying was maybe one night through the week. I don't know how much it was. And then, I mean, as I got older, it was progressively worse, right? But maybe more than that. I don't know. But, like, definitely on the weekends, you know? And I... I don't know, I just look back on that, and like, I'm, here's the thing, it's like a double-edged sword, because I'm so grateful for everything that I have gained as a result of my sobriety, and all of the people that I have met that I wouldn't have met, and the opportunities that I have, and just, you know, recovery is a design for, so, being sober is a design for living, we talk about that, right, it says that in our text, our basic text, it's a design for, this is a design for living, and I'm so thankful for that design for living today, I'm so thankful for a way of living and to have purpose and meaning to my life today. But I really feel like I missed out on a lot. I mean, there's just nothing right about a 14 year old kid sitting alone, watching a movie, drinking by himself. I just, it's just a sad picture, you know? And I'm like, I don't know why at that time. Like, I mean, I do believe it's because of the predisposition for addiction, but I don't know like, I mean, I was so lonely. I had no friends. But I don't really understand why I felt like this need to, like, fill it with that. I think I was always just looking for some kind of excitement or something different in my life, you know? And I, think, I really think that's a lot of where it started from. Boredom and loneliness, you know? And because I can remember, like, I couldn't wait to, like, get to my dad's house and when everybody would go to sleep. I'd just be like, okay, what movie now? And I'd just, like, sit there. You know? Which is so weird, because, like, that's how my mom had drank for years, and I hated that. Like, she would sit in that yellow chair in her bedroom and smoke one cigarette after another, and, you know, she would, um, you know, watch these movies and drink and cry and get sad, and then there I am, you know, growing up, and I'm, like, sitting in this bedroom... 14, 15 on, you know, whatever. I don't even know how old I was. Sitting there getting so upset about these movies and being drunk, you know? Anyway, I don't know. But I think I'm going to get off here now and listen to a little bit of my audiobook. And then I am going to... I'm going to try to get home a little bit early tonight and get a good night's rest and get a bunch of stuff done tomorrow. So anyway, I'm going to get off here now. If nobody else has told you this today, who loves you? I love you. 3D. And um, yeah, and uh, I'm like distracted telling those stories. I don't know. I need to, uh, I need to uplift myself a little bit. It's hard sometimes, you know, like Tani and I were sh sharing some stories tonight and um, what did she say to me? I was talking to her about something from... I was talking about... Was this... T this was tonight. I was talking about, like, when I first got sober, like, I didn't see myself in meetings, you know? And that there just weren't... Like, there weren't other gay guys. And uh, there weren't a lot, at least. Maybe once every blue moon and they'd be like 50. I didn't see myself in the rooms. And that was hard for me. For many, many years, you know, that I didn't... I was looking to see myself. And instead, what I saw was... And what I learned, and this was important, was that addiction, alcoholism, really has recovery, sobriety has no specific look. It has no specific background or personality or sexuality or whatever. And that's what I learned, right? But at first, I looked for identification. I looked for the similarities. I looked for the, I was looking for similarities, but only found differences. And it was really hard, you know, I didn't, we were talking about that tonight, so. Man, it's been a heavy day of talking about stuff, so I'm going to get off here now, but listen to a little bit of a cozy mystery and laugh a little bit, 
and uh, try to get up a little bit early tomorrow so I can get a bunch of stuff done. So I'm going to get off here now. And um, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Who loves you? You know I do. Nobody else has told you this today. I love you. And um, you're going through something tonight. I hope that better days are ahead. And um, hopefully things will be okay very, very soon. And I love you guys. And I will hope you're having a magically amazing Tuesday. I love you guys. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya. Oh, and for those that need to hear it, what? One more I love you. <laughs> oh, that was way off tune. One more I love you. And don't point at people. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. Love ya.